Today I want to speak about how that God has given to us all His gifts, His blessings, and His promises. All. Oh, what? His gifts. His promises. And His blessings. How many? All. Oh. Is there any gift? Is there any promise or any blessing that is not ours? We received it all. All the fullness that Jesus possesses, we possess. We are heirs and equal heirs, co-heirs, joint heirs, together with Christ. He earned all of these by His perfect life, His perfect track record. And because He finished it perfectly, He now, all of these gifts and promises of blessings that belong to Him are now ours because we are His members. We are the members of His body. Amen. As we said before, the gifts and the callings of God are without a change of mind. God will not change His mind. Once He gives you a gift, He doesn't change His mind. Notice, these are gifts, not loans. They're gifts. That means once they are given to us, they are, we possess them. They belong to us. They're not out on loan. They're out given to us as a gift. And once God gives you a gift, He knows what He's doing, which means He's not going to change His mind. Amen. He's not going to change His mind. Well, maybe God will change His mind if your performance isn't perfect. No. You are now a member of His body, who, yeah. and His body did the perfect performance, and so God cannot deny Himself. And so once He gives you a gift, it's yours, permanently. Amen. Amen. He wouldn't have given it to you if He saw down the future, oh, He's not worthy, or, or I don't want to give it to Him. God doesn't change His mind. Mm -hmm. He said He would not... He will not change His covenant. He will not break His covenant. Neither will He alter. Alter or change or revise the things that have gone forth out of His mouth. Once He speaks it, it's law. Once He speaks it, it cannot be changed. He will not change it. He would not have spoken it to begin with if He didn't intend to keep it. Somebody said Amen. Amen. Alright. So, God's gifts... And his callings are without repentance. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 6 through 7. The scripture tells us, Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Now, when we got saved, we confessed, we testified that Jesus Christ was our Savior. And how was our testimony confirmed? By receiving the promise of the Father, which the baptism with the Holy Ghost is referred to in the New Testament. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptizes water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days afterward. And that happened on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, they received the promise of the Father, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to prophesy in other tongues as the Spirit gave them to utter forth. Because what is, what is the promise of the Father? In Joel chapter 3, the Bible tells us, in the book of Joel, it tells us, that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And Peter said what was happening on the day of Pentecost, as the 120 were speaking in other dialects, that they were prophesying, and it was the fulfillment of the prophet Joel, which I just quoted to you, that he would pour out his Spirit, God would pour out his Spirit upon all flesh, and they would prophesy. And that is the initial gift of the Holy Spirit that everybody receives at the reception of receiving the Holy Ghost. The first thing anybody does is he prophesies. We know that 
Because the pattern in Scripture shows us that. In Acts chapter 2, they prophesied when they received the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10, the household of Cornelius all prophesied when they received the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 19, they all prophesied and spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance in Acts chapter 19. So we know the Jerusalem church all spoke in tongues and prophesied. We know that the church in Caesarea all prophesied as they spoke in tongues. And we know that the church at Ephesus all prophesied as they spoke in tongues. And we know that the Corinthian church all prophesied and spoke in tongues. As Paul said, you may all prophesy one by one. So everybody can prophesy, but one gift will not be operated by everybody in a given meeting. That's what Paul is talking about. In a given meeting, after people have already been filled with the Holy Spirit, one will give a prophecy, one will give an interpretation, one will receive gifts of healing if healing is needed, one will have the word of wisdom, another will have the word of knowledge. All given by the same Spirit, faith by the same Spirit comes, so when the church is gathered together, God uses the various members of his body to operate in these several gifts, but all may have these gifts and may be used at various times in different gifts. All right, so we see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 6 through 7, he said the testimony of Christ was confirmed in them so that you come behind in no gift. You don't come behind in any gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul understood that these gifts would be in the church to their full extent until Jesus comes back and gets us. Amen? Amen. So the gifts are in the church until the rapture of the church. All right. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. We also know that the church at Thessalonica received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, for our gospel didn't come to you in word only, but in power. That's dunamis. And in the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you receive dunamis after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he said, in Thessalonians, he said, don't quench the Spirit. He said, don't despise prophesying. So there was prophesying going on in the church at Thessalonica also. And also the gift of miracles was present in the churches. As Paul said to the church of Galatia, he said, He that works miracles among you, is he doing it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? All right, so we preach the word of faith, and therefore the, it is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ that imparts prophesying, that imparts the working of miracles, that imparts the gifts of healing, that imparts all of these gifts. All of these gifts the Corinthians did not come behind in. They had all the gifts which means that all the gifts are available to everybody. All right, in Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. How many blessings? All. How many blessings? All. Yeah. All spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then, so we see that we possess all spiritual blessings. We, we, possess, we don't lack any gift. We possess all spiritual blessings. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, all of God's promises are given to us. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. All right, what did Peter say here? He said, whereby are given, gifted, given and gift. Gifts are given. Gifts aren't sold. Gifts are given. Gifts aren't paid for. Gifts are received. Amen? Amen. All right, so it's not a purchase, it's a gift. He said in First Peter, I mean Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4, whereby are gifted to us exceeding great and precious promises. Why? That by these promises we may be partakers of the divine nature. We can live like God. We can have God's nature 
and operating God's nature because we have all of God's promises. Hallelujah. And we read again in sec in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 19 through 20. What did Paul say in 2 Corinthians here? He said, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you, was not yes and no. He said it was not yes and no, but in Him, in Christ, was always yes. Alright? For all the promises, all the promises of God in Him, in Christ, are yes and in Him, amen. So we see that all the promises of God are ours. And we may say yes to all of these promises. He promised that by whose stripes you were healed. Can we say yes to our healing? Yes. And we can say amen. What is amen? It's Hebrew for it is so. That's amen. the way it is. So we can say yes because these are promises. God guarantees them to us. And so if God guarantees something, if He's promised you something, He's not going to go back on His promise. They're without repentance. Hallelujah. He wouldn't give you the promise if He didn't intend to keep the promise. Hath God said and will He not do it? Or hath He spoken something and won't He bring it to pass? Of course He will. And once the word, once the promise that goes forth from His lips, He will not reverse it, but it will go forth and it will run very swiftly. And the Bible said in Isaiah, it will accomplish that for which it was sent out. If God right. intended you to be blessed, then it's going to accomplish blessing you. If He promised healing, then it's going to go forth and you're going to be healed. God doesn't speak healing unless He intends to heal. And He already spoke it. The promise has already gone out of His mouth. And so therefore we can say, I am already healed. Somebody said Amen. Amen. Alright, so how many of the promises of God in Him are yes and Amen? All. Oh. How many gifts are ours? All. Oh. How many promises are ours? All. Oh. How many blessings are ours? All. Oh. So we're, real, we're rich in God's blessings and promises and gifts, aren't we? Amen. We are rich. Hallelujah. Eternal life is a gift. It is not a loan. <laughs> Amen. He didn't give us, as I said in times past, temporary life. He didn't give us <laughs> probationary life. He gave us what kind of life? Oh. Eternal life. Eternal. Never ending life. Eternal means never ending. And so if it cannot end, then we have to live forever once we receive the gift of eternal life. Is eternal life a gift? Yeah. Yes, it is. We find it in Romans 6.23. Romans 6 and verse 23. What does it say in Romans 6.23? For the wages, the payment of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, yeah. there's a difference between payments and gifts. A payment is something you earned. Well, whatever we earned was death. We couldn't earn life. But God gave it to us as a gift because we couldn't earn it. Amen? Amen. God gave us eternal life because it's a gift. We receive the gift of eternal life. Yes. Amen. So, salvation, righteousness, and eternal life are gifts. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, what did Paul write to Titus? Okay, let's read it. In hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promised when? After we did all the right things? No. Before the world began, before we were ever born. God promised before anybody deserved it or didn't deserve it. He promised eternal life to everybody that would believe on His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, we find that salvation, righteousness, and eternal life are gifts in Titus 1-2. Then in Romans chapter 5. Verse 
verses 16 through 18. Romans chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. What does the Bible tell us? And not only, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift, free, you can't buy it, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace, those who get saved, and of the gift of righteousness, so righteousness is what? A gift. Shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life, eternal life. We are justified, made righteous, therefore we have eternal life. It was a gift. Condemnation and judgment came upon men who wouldn't believe those who didn't get saved. But once we're saved, we don't receive what we deserve. We don't receive condemnation or judgment. We receive the gift of eternal life, which means we didn't earn it. Amen? Amen. And we, once we're born again, we're made righteous in the sight of God. For by grace you are saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast or brag. No, we aren't given eternal life because we earned it. Eternal life is only a gift. Not on loan. God's not going to take it back. Jesus Christ said, I give them eternal life. I give it to them. It's a gift. I give them eternal life and they will maybe perish. No. Never perish. Now if you perish, then Jesus Christ didn't keep his word. Then Jesus lied. He didn't lie. He said, they shall never perish. Who? Those who receive never-ending life. How can you receive, how can you perish, how can you die, if you have never-ending life? You can't. You cannot die. Alright, that's, that's why God even had to banish Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden lest they take of the tree of life and, and live forever. He didn't want them to live forever as sinners. No. So Jesus Christ, when He gives eternal life, we cannot die. We cannot die. Amen. Amen. For that which is in us, the seed remains in us. John said in the fifth chapter of the first epistle of John, and said His seed remains in us, and even as that seed, the Spirit of truth, is in us, we shall remain in Christ. For how long? Forever. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of what? The Holy Spirit of promise, right? We are sealed. We are guaranteed. These are gifts. They are free. We can't earn them. They are ours the moment we are born again. We receive these promises, these exceeding great and precious promises. And we can go through the scripture and we can quote all the promises of God. No weapon formed against me will prosper. And every tongue that rises up to in con condemnation against me, I will condemn. No, they will not succeed. I succeed. They are not blessed. I am blessed. They don't have eternal life. I have eternal life. And it is the Spirit within me that testifies to my eternal life. Therefore, I know I'm convinced because I have the abiding Holy Spirit who came to abide with me forever. Amen. Well, what? Somebody says, what if you decide not to serve God? That's not going to happen because you're a new creature now. Once you receive eternal life, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things, not some things, 
All things are become new, and all things come from God, who is also given to, anointed us with His Holy Spirit. And if God is in us, and He is greater than all, and He is, greater is He that is in me, which means that as He is working in me, both to will and to do His good pleasure, He is winning out in my life, and I will both want to do His will, and I will have the power to accomplish and to do His will. Mm -hmm. You see, you have to take the whole of the Word of God. He is able to keep us from falling, not ourselves. He is the one that is working in us mm -hmm. to stand and to resist the devil and to reject and cast down the lies of the devil. Hallelujah. So we have Amen. a great and a blessed assurance that the God who is in us will see us through all the way to the coming of the Lord Jesus when we see Him face to face. Somebody said Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so eternal life is a gift, a free gift. Yeah. The promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, is a free gift to all those who are born again. All the blessings of God are yes, and the promises of God are yes and amen to us. So we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Oh, Even as Christ is the giver, so we receive as His body all His gifts. The Bible says, in Christ dwells all the fullness, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And that we are in His body, and therefore also we are full of them, because we are in Him. We are complete or full in Him. He is full of all of God, therefore His body is full of all of God, and we are that body. Somebody said Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank You for everything You've given us. It's all blessed. It's all a gift. It's all a promise. And we know, therefore, God, that we need not fear or worry about anything. But yes. we Amen. can be blessed, we can be, be receiver, we have received all your gifts, all your blessings, all your promises. We say yes and amen to all your gifts, all your blessings, and all your promises through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. And therefore, we need not fear, we need not let our hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Lord Jesus, you knew that our hearts would be tempted to the devil to fear. But Lord, we will not let them fear. We will cast down every imagination and every fear that comes against us. We will not accept it. We will not receive it when it comes knocking at our door. We will keep our door shut to all of the temptations and all the fears that are out there in the world. Because Jesus, you dwell within us. The Holy Spirit is greater in us than he that is in the world. And therefore, we are more than conquerors through you who loved us. In Jesus' name.